Welcome back to Ta-da! 3D Printing. I am into the third part of the setup for the Prusa XL. I never would have thought it would take me this long to get ready to print, but it's a new day and I'm ready to get through this calibration. This is the third attempt at the tool offset calibration. On the last video, you saw that it errors and reset itself on tool head 3 and then on tool head 5. So let's see how it goes today. Um, the beginning of this calibration starts with the build plate on it first. So I remove the calibration pin and get the build plate set up again. Okay, so this finally, the calibration finally worked. This was the third time. So the tool offset calibration is done. Remove the calibration pin, which I just did, and install the sheet. So I'm gonna just keep it with the satin powder coat that it came with. Continue. Yes, I want to do one more. I think there's one more thing. I think. We'll see. But just start it over completely. The last part of the calibration is a heat bed test. This takes about two minutes to heat up. Okay, it looks like that finally finished. So that was the last thing. The bed heater test was the last item. Looks like I have green checks all the way up. Finally, so I should be able to print something now. Am I missing anything? Am I forgetting anything else? I've, I've put away the, the instructions. Put away the instructions and I thought well, the last thing that I needed to do was calibration. So I guess I need to find the USB and start loading some filament. Okay, so let's load some filament. Currently have that one out. So. Oh, and I also need to set this aside over here. Okay. 
don't see any filament yet, so I'm gonna purge some more. Make sure this is actually moving. It doesn't really feel like it's moving. Okay, there it's starting to go. Cool. So we're good on that one. Now I want to load the next one and go through all of these. After I loaded the first print head with filament, I was thinking each of the next filaments would go quickly because the print head was already heated. It took me until the third one to realize my thinking wasn't right. I guess I had gotten used to the MMU, etc., that only has one print head nozzle, etc. that has to heat up. On the Prusa XL, each print head and nozzle has to heat up separately. Why it doesn't let you preheat them all? I don't know, maybe I missed that. To save a little time, I started loading the filament into the tubes and just pushing it the last little bit into the print head when it asked. It still took me 13 minutes to load all five filaments, but I didn't have too much trouble with them. This one has a QR code on it, and I don't remember the other ones having that. It's not going to want to show you. Okay, so of course we have a Prusa logo, and I don't see that it says that it's multicolor. Hmm. What else do we have? Okay, so that's just the regular thing, and then we've got then we've got three different folders for the different heads. So of course the single tool I should have I probably have printed all this. The rocket motor, first layer test, Adelina Buddy, Batarang. The dual head, we have keychain, Adelina, manual calibration, herringbone, planetary year. Cool. I haven't printed that. Um, rocket engine, I'm assuming, is just going to have two colors. Buddy, I think Buddy has two colors as well. I think like his collar is different. Um, okay, so that's all for two. And then for five, keychain, dual, keychain, first layer. What's the manual calibration? Huh. Buddy. I'll have to look at the time frame on that other one because this one says one day 18 hours. One day 10 hours. So there must be more color changes, which would make sense. The gear bearing. Cool. Adelina. Okay, I don't see, I don't see a Benchy. Um, so let's do the five head keychain. At first I started recording with time lapse. I wasn't sure where on the print bed it would print, but then I thought you guys might like to see the tool heads changing in real time. move a lot faster than I would have thought. Enough that I probably shouldn't put my camera stand 
on the same table that the XL is on. Of course, this is just an IKEA table on four legs without much support below it. Okay, so first print is done and you can see already that there is some stringing on the bed. It looks like, well, all of them honestly look like they've been, there's some stringing on every tool head. Um, I think it's cooled enough. Yeah. Maybe I should have scooted my camera back a little bit. But there is a decent amount of stringing. Not just stringing that I can brush off, but like the O and the R look kind of rough. Especially the O. The S, okay, we can brush that little bit off. The black turned out pretty good. So all of these other colors are Overture and the black is Prusament. So maybe it's having a little bit of trouble with the filament of Overture. But what's strange about this, and I, I was really curious how things were gonna look when I got this because I've been seeing stuff about stringing online. I know that there's some info in the blog about um, possibly reducing the temperature a little bit. But what's strange is I don't have this issue with my single tool head. So of course it's not, you know, it's not switching colors. So that must be where the stringing is coming from is the switching colors because I, I don't have that problem on the single tool head. Also, I did not change anything on the firmware. Um, I didn't update anything. I just turned the printer on and I know that I do want to try out the input shaping uh, alpha. Um, I'm trying to decide when I'm going to do that because I really want to make sure that things are operating good that things are operating correctly before I move on and start doing, especially the alpha of input shaping is, yeah. The stringing from the black tool head even drug a piece through the first layer. That kind of sucks. The black looks the best, but honestly, it's not perfect either. Cause you can see even the A, the S. Hmm. I'm trying to decide whether I want to, I wanted to do the five, or if it's a five or six hour, the, hmm, let me look what it's called. Do the next longest one, basically. I wanted to do the gear bearing for six and a half hours but I'm a little nervous to do that now. I wonder if I need to first re-slice this and make the temperature a little lower, because of course I can't change anything on the G-code that's already um, pre-installed, but that's gonna be a little tricky with knowing exactly where the colors are. So I wonder if there's an Excel, um, the G-code or the 3MF file for exactly how this is sliced. Clearly the Prusa is solid, but the, the original has two colors on it. And then there's two colors on the base, so. Hmm. I was able to find the Prusa keychain on printables. I downloaded the 3MF file and wasn't sure if it would be colored the exact same as the preloaded one, it looks like it is the same, so to make sure nothing else is different, the only thing I change is aligning the print, and I make sure it's set at the default 215 temperature for the nozzle. I get this one printing, and right away I notice the stringing across the bed, which is okay. I know I am starting with the same print, at least. This one looks just a tiny bit better, but it's still very stringy. The O is just a little less rough. I don't know what I expected, but I need to do something different. Also, all these strings on the front of the bed make me paranoid something will get caught underneath. I guess I shouldn't worry too much because the XL should adjust, right? I think to start, I'm going to lower the nozzle temperature from 215 to 210. This one didn't have the black string smear into the first layer. I get the print at 210 going. There was one little purge line it dropped. Uh, but other than that, it already looks much less stringy. I 
I think this one turned out much better. Any stringing seems small, like it will pop off. It's not perfect, but it makes me want to try a longer, more challenging print. Would you keep trying to fine tune this print, or would you try something more difficult? Thanks for watching.